It's Thursday, April 4th. Following complaints by the Amadmi Party and the Congress over the launch of Namo TV, dedicated to broadcasting the Prime Minister's speeches and rallies, the Election Commission wrote to the Information Broadcasting Ministry seeking more details. The ministry, India Today reports, has replied saying that Namo TV is not a licensed channel but a direct to home advertisement platform. The BJP, the ministry said, is incurring the cost. The channel launched last week as the Prime Minister's face as its logo and is devoted to the coverage of his speeches and rallies. While it wasn't clear who owns Namo TV, both the BJP and the Prime Minister had been promoting it on social media. The Commission has also written to state broadcaster Doordarshan, seeking information on its decision to air an hour-long broadcast of the Prime Minister's Mebhi Chaukidar program on the 31st of March. Meanwhile, a flying squad of the Election Commission had seized copies of a book on the Rafale deal, citing a violation of the Model Code of Conduct. The flying squad, the persons involved, first they called the people at the venue and had the meeting cancelled, frightened them. We don't know who did that, but they got a call. Secondly, they turned up and confiscated from the showroom 150 copies. Fortunately, they were not destroyed and they were returned. And uh, they were under the impression that the, mo- that, uh, the rules of the, uh, for elections, applicable to elections, particularly the model code of conduct, gives them the license to act in a partisan way. The book, largely a compilation of investigative news articles and information already available in the public domain, has been authored by S. Vijayan, an engineer. Following an approach on social media with many pointing out that the election commission is quite fine with propaganda movies on the prime minister but sees it fit to seize books, Tamil Nadu's chief electoral officer stepped in saying, Regarding the seizure of books, neither the Election Commission of India nor the Chief Electoral Officer's office had given any instructions. I have directed the District Electoral Officer in Chennai to look into it and give his report immediately. The books were later returned. Here's some news you can use. WhatsApp on Tuesday launched a fact-checking service in India to help curb the spread of misinformation ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. WhatsApp has tied up with Indian startup Proto and two other organizations, Dig Deeper Media and Medin, for the service called Checkpoint Tipline. Users can send messages including images, video and text in English, Hindi, Telugu, Bengali and Malayalam. The tipline will classify the messages as true, false, misleading or disputing. The number is 91964 WhatsApp in a statement said, The challenge of viral misinformation requires more collaborative efforts and cannot be solved by any one organization alone. The company described Checkpoint as a research project commissioned and technically assisted by WhatsApp. This is one of several initiatives launched by the platform to tackle fake news ahead of the elections. The platform's role in enabling the spread of misinformation was highlighted after multiple mob lynchings were reported in India last year and were believed to have been sparked by rumours about child kidnappers spread on social media. In July, the messaging platform imposed a limit of five on the number of times a message can be forwarded on WhatsApp. The platform, however, has end-to-end encryption on its messages, meaning that the messages cannot be read by a third party, and even the company itself, which has posed a challenge when it comes to tracking down the source of misinformation. The Congress on Wednesday accused the BJP of bribing voters in Arunachal Pradesh. Congress spokesperson Randeep Singh Surjewala claimed the police had seized 1.8 crore rupees after raiding Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister Pema Khandu's convoy on Tuesday night. Cash for vote scandal. Bharatiya Janta Party ka asli chehra ujagar kar raha hai. The Congress alleged that the money was to be distributed to people ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's rally in Arunachal Pradesh's Pasir Ghat on Wednesday. The party released two unauthenticated videos of the raid on Tuesday night. The Congress claimed the notes in 500 rupee denominations were seized around 10.30 p.m. Meanwhile, Arunachal Pradesh's Chief Electoral Officer Kaling Taing confirmed a recovery of 1.8 crore rupees from a raid but did not specify if any political party was linked to the seizure. The Hindustan Times reported. 
Less than 15 aircraft of the beleaguered jet airways are currently operational, Civil Aviation Secretary P.S. Karola said on Wednesday. The airline has had to ground the rest of its fleet of 119 aircraft due to non-payment of lease rentals. The Secretary also said the airline's eligibility to fly internationally needs to be examined. The State Bank of India-led consortium of lenders had taken over the management of the cash-strapped airline last month. The National Aviators Guild, the pilots' union of the airline, has written to the Director General of Civil Aviation and Jet Airways CEO demanding interest on their delayed salaries along with timely payment. The pilots and engineers haven't been paid since January. Brunei, a tiny Asian country, has implemented a penal code that makes gay sex and adultery crimes punishable by stoning to death. In 2014, the Sultan Hasnal Bolkiah-led government became the first Asian country to adopt Sharia laws in totality. Earlier, the Sharia law applied only to Muslims in the country, but since 2014 have applied to all residents, irrespective of their religion. Under Sharia law, those who have a child out of wedlock, consume alcohol, fail to pray on Fridays or promote religions other than Islam, face fines or jail time. The second phase launched this week now includes medieval-era punishments like public whippings and amputations. The AFP reported Sultan Bolkiah saying, I want to see Islamic teachings in the country grow stronger. CNN spoke to terrified members of the LGBT community who are now applying for asylum abroad. Once a British protectorate on the island of Borneo, oil-rich Brunei's hardline new penal code has been criticised by the United Nations and international NGOs. Love your morning fix? Help support our journalism. Subscribe to Scroll Plus using the link in the description.